And the sculpt on the hat is really, really nice, too. If he gets himself into some trouble, he could use this as a bowl or a shovel or, you know. It's a utility thing, I guess, because it sure isn't a fashion thing. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series 40th Anniversary Death Squad Commander. If you saw my Jawa review yesterday, you knew this one was coming. I got my Series 2 from Dorkside Toys. I'm completely happy with what I've seen so far. The Jawa is not as army buildy as I thought it would be, but we'll see if this one's more army buildy. Yeah, I just made that up. We make up our own English down here. But the name Death Squad Commander kind of bugs me. I understand that's what was on the vintage card. That's what they're reproducing here in the modern format. So I'm good with it. And when it comes down to it, it's just the packaging. The biggie for me is that we're not getting a reproduction of the original figure. The original one had a gray suit on. It had that vintage head that was supposed to be like this, but it's just more like a cone. And then it had a rank emblem on it. We get to this release, and it's actually a Death Star Trooper in the package. Or what I consider a Death Star Trooper. But in the long run, I am completely good with that. I'd rather have this, which represents something we saw in the movie, than have some gray suit, bucket head thing that wasn't actually in the movie, or at least I don't remember it in the movie. Now with the package, of course, with the 40th line, they are reproducing the vintage card with modern figures, modern size, that kind of thing, and I really dig this. Like I said yesterday, I'll probably talk about that aspect during the weekly, whenever that pops up this week. But the bubble, you can see everything in it, everything that comes with the figure, so I do like that. Man, this just kicks me straight in my nostalgia crotch. And I only say it like that because really, I mean, it's just hitting so hard it almost hurts. It, mm, yeah, again, I'll talk about that later. On the back, very vintage looking again. You have both waves one and two of the 40th line. You have the early bird kit that comes with Vader, legalese, and then some unreadables as usual. It probably says something like, not actually a commander, don't let him command anything. So I'm gonna get this open and see exactly what's going on here. So you know what that means for you mint on card collectors, or if you're looking for that perfect card, it's time to fast forward. As much as I hate doing this, what am I talking about? I love doing this. Not to make people cringe or anything, it's just that, like I've said several times while opening these, something nostalgic about both having the card and ripping it open, because that's what I did when I was a kid. I opened the hell out of these things. I didn't buy, why is this tape being tapey? Let's see if this one just, no. You know what? know how this goes. And to those of you who have said, oh, that I can just cut open here, or cut open down here, and just slide it out, leave the bubble on, that's not what I did when I was a kid. So, this is what I did. So good. And there we go, all out of the package. And I have to say, for what really is a throwaway character, I mean, seriously, go back, try to think of the exact thing he was doing in the movie. Yeah. For a character like that, I have to say, I really dig this figure, and it makes me want more. But the sculpt, I thought they may reuse this from uh, some other figure, at, at least parts, pieces, anything, but no, this is all new sculpt as far as I can tell. The whole thing has a nice texture to it, the angles to it in some places, like the chest piece, the shirt, it has a flap on the front that comes all the way up, it kind of angles towards the shoulders. It's a great little detail that I had never noticed before, really. The bagginess of the pants, the thickness of the boots. I don't know why that sticks out at me the most, but I just love how heavy the base of the figure looks down towards the ground. The boots and the gloves are smooth, but to break that up, and again, I couldn't tell you if this is accurate or not, but there's buckles around the wrists that is a really neat little feature that adds to the overall thing. It could be just a super plain sculpt of a dude in a black uniform with a noodle strainer on his head, but it's more than that. <laughs> the figure is kind of awesome. Paint-wise, I think everything is kind of molded in its correct color. You do get a little silver on the belt, the cartridges, the buckle, and then the buckles on the gloves, which they didn't have to do, but they did, so that's cool. But then you get up to the head, and you look at the sculpt of the head. It's 
familiar, but I can't quite place it. And I'm sure some of you will post down in the comment section saying, hey, that looks just like so-and-so, and I'll go, oh my god, it does. But between the sculpt and paint on the head, it does look really good. And with the colander hat on, it looks even better because it finishes the ensemble, I guess you could say. But to change things up a little bit, I'm going to go into accessories first because I can't really go over articulation and all that without pointing out one accessory. The first accessory is his pistol or rifle or small gun or whatever you want to call it. It's a nice little sculpt. It doesn't have a lot of paint on it, but it is molded in kind of a gunmetal color. It's not straight black. It's kind of a grayish, shiny color. And then the tip of the gun is silver, just to kind of differentiate that from the rest of the weapon. And that can either go in his hand, he's got the trigger finger, which works really well, or it goes in the holster. Now the holster is really nice too, it has the straps sculpted over it, it has kind of a leather look to it. it. Again, it doesn't look like anything else on the figure. You put the gun in, it slides down to here, but once you get to that point, you push it past and it's really, really tight, so that's not coming out. And then his other accessory, or what I'm calling an accessory because it's a separate piece that comes off, and that would be his helmet hat headwear thing. Like I talked about, nice sculpt of this. There's kind of two different sheens on it. The top of it is a dull black or it's been scuffed. It looks like it has some wear, but it's not intentional wear. And then around the brim of it is a shiny black. And with this strap coming down over the face, it doesn't come off. We saw some display pictures from Toy Fair where it was like off the head. It looked real funky. It was sitting back, but I can't seem to reproduce that on the actual figure because of the strap. It's a tight fit. Not super tight. You can get a little bit of movement out of it, but the hat stays on. And to take it off, you just pop it off the chin and it comes off the head. And like I said, that looks like somebody. In my brain, because I'm in total Star Wars mode while looking at this, I think that would be a great Baron Fell head for a custom. But what do I know? Like I said, somebody will come up with an idea and then I'll totally go with it. Now the hair is painted, but it kind of misses the hairline coming around. The skin tone comes up onto the hair there and the hair comes down onto the skin tone there. So it's not perfect, but overall eyebrows, eyes, it does look pretty good. There's nothing to bring out the lips. There's no lip color there. So again here, a total head repaint would probably look great. And I don't really have anything else to grab about here. I will say that the knee joints are the tightest I have had in a long time, especially the top part of the knee. But as I've messed with it, it has kind of loosened up. Now going over articulation, there's a ball on the top of a hinge in the neck going up into the head so he can look up. He can look down. Not a lot of tilt. There's not a lot of gap in the concave under the head. Then of course there's swivel. Hinge and swivel at the shoulder comes up 90. Swivels around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow actually comes up past 90. Then there's swivel. Hinge and swivel at the wrist you have swivel and then you have up and down hinge which is good for gunfighting hand but it's also on the left hand which I haven't seen in a while. There's a ball joint in the lower torso at the waist so you get swivel there. You get back, you get a little forward, a little side, a little side. Not really a great range of movement. The skirt piece isn't the softest material in the world, but it is split on both sides, so it can get up and out of the way. There's a hinge and swivel in the hips. It comes up to about right there, goes back, goes out. There's a swivel at the thigh. Double knee, like I said, are really tight, but it does come up all the way. That's great range of movement right there for some baggy pants. Hinge at the ankle goes pretty much all the way back. Forward, not so much. It has this, this nice wrinklage. Wrinklage? <laughs> Whatever that means. It has these nice wrinkles right here and then kind of a seam line running right there. So it does get in the way of the hinge there. And then forward facing pin for Rocker. For comparison, here he is with the Amazon 4-pack Black Series Stormtrooper. And the two sizes here line up really well. And then here he is with the 40th anniversary Darth Vader. I love this Darth Vader. It's beaten everything on the shelf and having these two side by side completely works here too. So at the end of the day, I'm super happy with this. Not only from the adding a new character to the shelf perspective, but this figure itself. Unlike the Jawa yesterday, I want to army build this guy. I don't need super squadrons, but it's easy enough to switch out the head here give you different versions of the Death Star Trooper. And then taking this head and putting it on an X-Wing body or a fighter pilot or if we had rebel troopers or indoor troopers or anything like that it would be easy switches. You could change up between all the figures. And the body itself 
I know it wouldn't fit in with my other Marvel figures, but this body would work pretty much perfect for some kind of Red Skull. But even then, if you wanted to use it for other officers, when we get Tarkin, when we get Thrawn, maybe you can mix and match parts between all three of these, give you different commanders, give you different looks. It really sets off the fireworks in your head for customizing ideas. But this really makes me want Rebel Troopers, Indoor Troopers, other X-Wing pilots, I, you know, more generic troops to army build, or background characters that they may not think are as important as they really are. I feel like we're going to be needing more of these as time goes on. With this head, give the indoor trooper a different head, give the rebel trooper a different head, and then if you buy three of them, you can mix and match the heads. You buy three more, mix and match the heads, and you can at least have three different of each trooper. Because I just don't feel that with a release like this, or generic troopers, they're going to add additional heads. Although if they did add additional heads, that would be even more swappability. But that's just me rambling, wishlisting, hoping, I just stuff I would like to personally see. But that's the sign of a good figure. On top of playing with it, on top of displaying it, on top of being super happy with it, it also just kickstarts your imagination. It makes you think about future figures that you would want. It keeps you invested in the line. And I guess that's the best way to put it. Good figures keep you invested in the line. You put out boring figures, you put out shitty figures, or, you know, QC-ridden figures, people lose interest. It's stuff like this. As generic as the character may be, this is what keep people invested. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foosh.